I'm Monani. I'm so great to be here with you. Um, I was worried it would just be me and a couple people, so I'm, I'm very happy to see some friendly faces in the audience and excited to speak with you today about creating winning shopping experiences using generative AI. I started very early in the retail and CPG industries. My first job was to accompany my grandfather to his office at the India Coca-Cola headquarters, which was in Mumbai, back in the late 70s. I used to take notes for him in his meetings, and I used to draw pictures which hung over his desk. And then fast forward a couple of years later, my first paid job was at an Italian retail boutique called United Colors of Benetton. I folded colorful sweaters according to their very intricate folding technique, if you, if you remember the store, and I helped customers put together outfits for whatever they needed. Fast forward a few years ahead of that, and uh, those experiences led me to L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, Mondelez, and now my role at Accenture. So after 27 years in the retail and CPG industries, I wish that I had some of the things that I'm about to show you back then when I was a store clerk at Benetton. First, I'm going to recap 11,000 years of retail, and we will take it from there. We'll talk about how consumers discover products, how retailers might do some mind reading, and how we can use Gen AI to advance new product innovation in private label. The retail industry sees a new flavor of upheaval every year. Um, retail is at the mercy of many changing factors, changing consumer behaviors, supply chain disruptions, technology obsolescence, cyber attacks, regulatory changes, global changes, etc. It is one industry that has truly seen it all. Is Gen AI the answer for the retail industry? Let's find out. I love this Gertrude Stein quote, whoever said money can't buy happiness didn't know where to go shopping. <laughs> so let's rewind to 9000 BC. It is ingrained in our psyche as humans to trade goods. So there was a sheep and cow trade and that's the earliest recording, recorded trading of goods. Um, and then fast forward to 1745 with the Moravian bookshop opening in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, that is the result of, I see we have a fan from Moravia, <laughs> from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, so that is a result of, of, of a Google search. What was the first retail store in America? And that was the answer that was generated. So about 250 years later, Amazon started selling books online. And I find it really curious that the object of choice in both of these retail innovations were books. There are many Gen AI use cases, from better trained shop staff, better content, better marketing communications, easier extraction of insights from first party data, and accelerated product innovation. The efficiency in understanding and communicating with shoppers is becoming increasingly important. And the reason for that is that customer acquisition cost is rising quickly. As privacy laws globally are changing, it's not as cost effective to buy third party cookie data and cookies are going away anyway. It's hard to get to zero party data from customers without having their loyalty already. So the value of first party data and a retailer's ability to use it is going to become more critical than ever. Gen AI can help connect people to products more efficiently. It can generate a more holistic view of shoppers and it can accelerate product development and that's where we're going to focus today. So let's look into how Gen AI will aid discovery. So before cookies, the purchase journey was, was fairly linear. So imagine, if you will, that you wanted a pair of gold earrings. You might just go to a jewelry store and buy the pair that was, you know, that you liked the best or was within your budget. Um, but over the last decade or so, cookies have made it easy for us to find things that we never knew we needed. But that's changing quickly. The DTC players, the ankle biters, the challengers that you might have seen pop up in your Instagram feed, they aren't getting the same venture capital funding that they once did because the cost to acquire is simply too high, making the return horizon much longer for the venture capital investors. 
So this is an opportunity for traditional retailers who have a lot of scale and a lot of first party data. This, this is the moment for them. Shoppers are more loyal to retailers who can anticipate their needs. And throughout the shopper journey, there are opportunities to be more thoughtful about what that shopper is experiencing each step of the way. All retail channels must be interactive. We form bonds as humans when our five senses are engaged. In-store experiences are better when they press on each of those five senses. An online and mobile experience must be personalized in addition to stimulating visual senses. Google has lots of differentiated tools that can make an online experience more personal for a shopper. With Google tools and a connected understanding of shoppers, every individual can, for example, have her very own product discovery page that incorporates what the retailer and brand already knows about her and then adapts as they learn new things about her needs and her behaviors. But retailers need to make sure that they are continuously learning about her. How can retailers read shoppers' minds so that they can meet their needs in a truly exceptional way? Shopper mind reading might sound harder or more esoteric than it actually is. When we connect with one another as humans, we forge bonds. When I think about the new connections I've made here over the last three days and the bonds that I've strengthened, people that I don't get to see all the time, I am reminded of the power of human connections. And retailers can approach their shoppers in exactly the same way. When they ask questions, seeking to learn more, they, when they empower staff to serve shoppers better, and when they communicate with shoppers in the, more, in the most effective way, they forge bonds with those shoppers that become hard to break. Here's an example of Google technology that can help enable this bond. Google's Shelf Vision AI technology, images that can be taken by robots, fixed cameras, cell phones, can all be tabulated into data. And that data about shopping behaviors in stores, inventory levels at shelf, merchandising, pricing, all of those things can come together to form insights to make retailers better at delighting their shoppers. Back in the old days, mystery shoppers snooped around retail stores and they took inventory and they took field notes on what was on the shelf, how shoppers were behaving. Um, they would look at merchandising displays. I almost got arrested a couple of times in New York City in the early 2000s with my field notes when I was trying to watch shoppers and, and capture what they're doing. Um, would have been nice to have this back then. Um, shelf Vision AI would have also been really helpful back in my Benetton days. Um, if past behavior is indicative of future behavior, it is a really good thing to find ways to automate observation of human behavior in the store, and that will in turn help the retailer customize and tailor those shopping experiences. Consumers expect brands and retailers to understand their unique needs and differences. Using AI to personalize communication will bring speed and scale to the process. Let's look at an, at an example. Okay. Gen AI is making it easier to have meaningful conversations with shoppers. In this example, the shopper is looking for a bike that they would want to use for both triathlons and commuting. So this is a very specialized purchase, and the breadth of internal and external information that's available on the, the interwebs can come together, and Gen AI can filter it, consolidate it, and summarize it, and that'll in turn make this experience better for the shopper, but also better for, if there's an associate working with this information, a better experience for that person as well. And here's an example of um, some great work that Accenture did with McDonald's. Um, McDonald's partnered with Accenture and Google to enhance their customer and employee experience. And when I think about my experience with McDonald's, I remember the McDonald's Playland in the 1970s and 1980s. I don't know if many of you remember that, um, but I remember it well. It was the place of birthday parties and play dates during the sub-zero weather snowy days back in the Midwest. Um, and it engaged multiple human senses. It was memorable and nostalgic as a result. And I think today McDonald's is aiming to create a similarly feel-good experience for their customers. And in order to do this, they needed to find ways to operate more efficiently and farm out mundane tasks. 
and they also needed to learn more about their customers to create that valuable experience. So here's an example of how the power of Gen AI and edge computing came together. And the, the first moment of the truth for the customer would be that her McDonald's experience is faster than usual and very easy. With an outdoor mobile ordering board, it's easier to order ahead and pick up. She'll be in and out in no time. And in her second moment of truth, she'll be served in a more personalized way because McDonald's can capture some information about her when she's, when she's there. And she can then receive offers and have ordering experiences that meet her needs. Gen AI and edge computing bring the back of the house and the front of the house together seamlessly for McDonald's. Customer data will be captured, turned into insights that can be actioned into an increasingly personalized experience for every customer. I think the most powerful gift that Gen AI can give us is the gift of time. By taking care of the mundane, Gen AI gives us the space to do what we humans do best, take the time to create connections with each other and with our customers. So where can, how can we think about private label and new product development in a new way? So new product development stands to gain a projected $30 billion in, uh, in business value with Gen AI. Store brands used to be cheap, the, the fast follow of high velocity SKUs. And I remember groaning as a kid when my mom brought the lookalike Oreos home from the Dominics in Chicago. But private label has become a point of differentiation in some cases, and even a driver of store loyalty. There are certain Kirkland products from Costco that I just won't substitute. I will go to Costco specifically to get those things, and, and I imagine others do that as well. When a brand or retailer's internal data is combined with the vast collective knowledge of Google search, that $30 billion of projected value in new product development can be unlocked faster. And with changing privacy laws, now is the right time for product innovators to tap into Gen AI. Startups starve without cookies. Companies lose on average $29 for every new customer they acquired compared to $9 in 2013. So as a result, it's harder to get venture capital funding. And without the venture capital funding flowing like it did in the early 2010 era, there are fewer challenger brands that can get their start on Instagram. So it's the right time for those established retailers who have scale to bring customers back into their stores and back onto their apps with more meaningful products. The time for private label reinvention is now. High quality, meaningful private label will drive more loyalty and more profitability than the way that companies acquired customers um, as we knew it a few years ago. However, that said, developing new product innovation is, is costly. It's manual, it's time consuming, and it's limited to the institutional and individual knowledge of new product development teams. And, and I, I've been a part of those teams, and your, your new product pipelines are really only as good as the people that are, are developing them. And the risk of failure is costly. Trends are hard to nail down. But this is where Gen AI stands to deliver that $30 billion in business value. Google Insights is a great tool for product development teams to gain understanding of what is trending across various categories. Accenture has developed an accelerator for product development teams to combine their institutional knowledge of consumer needs and, and their concepts that they've written in the past with Google's vast collective knowledge. Let's see how. Brands place big bets on the new products that they lost, launch each year. On average, new products comprise 30 to 60% of a brand's annual revenue. So in this accelerator, new product concepts will be generated at scale. So in, in this example, you can create concepts for a, we're, we're going to look at a concept for moisturizing sunscreen. It's going to so source top external product trends from social media, from sales data. It can source trends externally and internally based on the data that the brand or company already has. In this example, we are sourcing trends from Google Shopping.
And once those trends are sourced, we can start to develop an insight. And if we, if we know our, our target consumer segment, we can start to handpick those, those trends from, from what is returned from the search. And then a white card concept is generated. And when, when consumer packaged goods companies or retailers developing private label develop their new product innovation portfolios, more likely than not, they're testing qualitatively and quantitatively with a white card concept. So what this does is it takes all of the, those external sources of information and combines them with the internal sources to create a larger set of concepts than a human could create in the same amount of time. And then this is where the human touch comes in. So once this accelerator has created the, the concepts, the human team can come in and really make those concepts come to life, really ensure that they're speaking to what their target, target consumer segment is interested in and that they are incorporating the best trends so that they can win big, win fast, and have a, a really strong new product pipeline. This was built on Gemini Ultra um, with the Vertex AI and with Imagine in the Vertex AI studio, so leverages some really great Google tools. Okay, so generative AI will transform retail. It will be absolutely transformative by way of personalized content, experiences, new products, and all of this will challenge our incumbent way of, of doing things. I'll end with another Gertrude Stein quote. However, this time I'm respectfully going to disagree with her because I do think the answers are there. We just need to be asking the right questions.